So Creative Commons is a licensing ar architecture to help people share materials on the web. So for example, you can share textbooks, text, just regular text, you can share video, audio, art, music, anything that's creative can be shared. And typically anything that is creative is automatically in the United States copyrighted for the life of the author plus 70 years. So one of the problems with that is that most of the time things that have been written or created are just sort of lost because after a certain number of years, you know, people don't know about it or they forget it and the author dies and it just ends up not being used or appreciated. So the idea of Creative Commons is to really put this all into one common area, sort of the history of mankind, that we can all share. And we can share music and art and so forth. So a lot of stuff that's past that uh, point of 70 years plus the death of the author are, is in the public domain. But the question is, do you want to wait all those years for it to get into the public domain? Perhaps we want to use it now. So what you can do is you can put a Creative Commons license on it today. Do you know there's, there's more than 400 million objects on the web licensed with Creative Commons licenses. And a lot of them are pictures. And they are on Flickr. So Flickr has millions of pictures with CC licenses on them on everything. And you can just take it. You have to attribute it. That's the number one thing you have to remember. You give that person credit, and then you can use it. And if it doesn't have a non-commercial component, you can use it anywhere. If it has a non-commercial component in your CNN, well, then you have to ask permission. And um, for example, on ABC, if you they covered the Olympics, and they had, as a background, a lot of snowflakes, a beautiful snowflake picture. They found that on Creative Commons. With an, and it didn't have a non-commercial license. It was just a regular Creative Commons. And you know what they did with that? They contacted the person anyway and asked him if he wanted to be paid or whether he wanted to be uh, recognized. And he chose being recognized. A lot of academic material, it actually doesn't ever, you don't ever earn a lot of money on it. I know from personal experience that you can create a lot of this stuff. and you know, can be published in some kind of a textbook. And uh, even as a textbook writer, unless your textbook is like number one in the country, you're not gonna earn a lot of money on it. And so especially if it's 10 years old, um, you'll never earn anything. So then I, you know, would put a Creative Commons license on something and then let it, let it act as a way for people to get to know me and get to know my work. There, let me also mention there's multiple licenses. So there's an attribution only license, that's the most open. You can have attribution non-commercial. So in other words, you, anybody can take it provided they don't want to use it in a commercial setting. And so let's say for example you put a creative non-commercial license on it and then you decide somebody wants to use it in a commercial sense, they contact you and they ask your permission and then you know, the, at that point you can negotiate a price on it. But otherwise, it, it travels around the web. Well, I would say right now we have probably 1% of all these documents in the world. And we have a long way to go. And we're, we would like to get it out so that people can appreciate it. So if you just go into a library, an old library or university library, and look at all the millions of books just sitting there with nobody reading them. It's such a shame, because the people that created those books I mean, I'm sure they would like you to know what they wrote.